lovely ones. Here comes again some cosmic guidance and translating and transposing these cosmic vibes that are supporting us in that huge healing and transformation that we are experiencing here and throughout the universe as we are not really separated from it all. So what is this all about, this cosmic guidance? How do we read the signs? How do we translate and transpose those new opportunities, these new paradigms, these new vibes, frequencies, energy and light? Well, some of us are actually translators and, and I, I want to include myself in this because I know that I am. Not all of us are translators and that's also okay because not all of us need to be translating. It is enough if some of us are doing that. I'm struggling a little bit here. I'm trying to get this organized now. Now we're in a better place. So some of us have this role of translating and transposing while others have the role of implementing that and bringing that into life. So it doesn't mean if you are not a cosmic guide or not a cosmic uh, translator of cosmic language that you don't have anything to do with it. No, it just means that don't push it. Everybody has their uniqueness and everybody plays their role in this ascension, in this shift into the Aquarian age, into what the Mayans call new consciousness, the Hopi prophecies. We find that throughout all native and shamanic traditions. We even find it in, in the cycles of, of astrology that go beyond the astrology of it, but the astrology is kind of proving it from the Aryan age about 5,000 years ago, where we had this first separation from the divine, from source, to experience that. And then of course, eventually evolve. We also went through, of course, the Piscean age with all of these amazing beings coming in like Gautama, Buddha and Christ. And yet we didn't get it because although they were telling us that the separation is not true, we didn't get it. We still created institutions and control. So now we have another opportunity. And in this series, what we're really looking at are these paradigms that kept us in that misunderstood, I want to call, Aryan idea of being sovereign and, and unique and do everything on your own and in a way also separating from the divine feminine. In the Taurian age there was a worship of women and there was a worship of the divine feminine and, and the cycles of life as birth, life, death and rebirth and of course as the masculine came in that disappeared. So what is also interesting, what came in at this time that we have continued until now is survival. Now we have all learned about the survival of the fittest in school. We all know that this is what it is. We are surviving. But really what makes the difference if we stop surviving? Nature, so Darwin, I say, I dare to say, was wrong. It's not about the survival of the fittest. And I feel we still don't really know what nature is all about. But in nature, what lives is what has a better symbiosis, what works together better. And when you, for instance, look at these big herds of, of elephants or, or giraffes in the savanna in, in Africa, how they protect their babies. And it's not really about survival of the fittest at all. So that whole paradigm of survival was based on one fear, two separation. 
if I'm in harmony, then I'm not worried about being weak. And what does weak mean anyway? So that survival creates quite a lot of havoc in our left brain and also creates a lot of havoc in our emotions. So we become very emotional. Oh my God, I need to survive. How do I survive? So it takes us into a whole drama, I want to say, how to survive, what does it mean? And I mean, even people who have a lot, they still feel they need to survive. Now, I once heard um, a guy who survived a plane accident in the Andes somewhere, and of course, they, they, they were trying to survive because here they were and nobody could find them. And of course, it's very difficult to access anyway where they were very high up in the Andes. And he said the moment something shifted for him was when he shifted from having the idea to survive to live. Doesn't seem to be so much different, but actually makes total sense. So as long as you are in the mode and in the paradigm of survival, it's actually very difficult to truly enjoy life and to truly access everything that's available. Now that's also connected. It's all interconnected to abundance. This is connected to many different things. If I'm not in a survival mode, then I'm also not in drama. If I understand that everything is a cycle and keeps on flowing and everything, I, I also don't live in mind control. So again, the survival plays a very important role. And yet it's also interconnected to the separation. So when we are in survival, we are actually disconnected or separated from the zest for life for that joy. And I remember some of my clients many years ago, they, they used that French expression, de, de vivre, I'm sorry if I don't pronounce it properly, but it means the same thing, the joy of life. They felt, I don't have that. And I actually want that. And so what is it that keeps us in survival? And of course, when you're in survival, and this goes back now to the scarcity, you never have enough. You constantly look to get something new, something else, and you always feel that you're not really living. So when you're in survival mode, like the guy in the Andes, you actually live from moment to moment trying to survive. It's not a state of expansion. It's not a state of consciousness. It's a preoccupation. It's a worry that constantly is with you. And of course, the way we have all been educated, not all, some of them went, some of us went to homeschool and maybe learned in another way, but the ordinary schools that most of us went to, we all learned about the survival of the fittest. And we all learned that this is, this is nature, this is life on earth. And when you start challenging that, a whole new journey begins. So I'm inviting you here to tune into these cosmic vibes that actually bring us the zest for life. We have come here to learn, to evolve, and now to be part of this amazing transformation, this evolutionary leap, not in survival mode, but in the zest for life. And this life is a gift, this body is a gift. Being here with each other, even though I'm in my hammock and you are somewhere else, it's a gift. So, let me transpose for you that beautiful, expansive vibration, that expansive energy, that frequency and light of the zest for life.
that we have been given to treasure, to enjoy, to be in harmony. So let's get more into the zest, into this joy of life and for living. So how does it feel for you to be in that zest of life and for living? Curious to hear from you. So put it down there in the comments from my heart to yours.